So thank you all very much for inviting me in such a beautiful place and also for the honor to be here in the day where Marta Patena has her mother medal and also in the day that I had a kiss on my hand from different men here that is not so usual now and I appreciate it very much and also for having just a scientist as I am, I am just a scientist. When I received the invitation, I told to myself, who suggested my name to these people so far from Italy uh, that I am not famous, I am just a researcher in my lab and I produce data, publish it, without any ambition to become famous. But apparently, I am. So I am here. And uh, I am really proud to tell you numbers, not discussion, not opinions, but just what we have seen in our experimental animal studies. So before presenting the da data, I need to introduce you for a short time to science, to uh, biology of cancer and other diseases because unfortunately we speak a lot about a lot of issues, but really journalists, other people that are involved in communication do not know really what happened in the cells, in the mm -hmm. studies, what is science, basic science, and what is the contribute. So first of all, the name of my institute is uh, Ramazzini. Bernardino Ramazzini was a, a doctor of the 17th century that for the first time said it pays for more to prevent than to treat. It is better to prevent than to cure. So on the name of this man in Italy but all over in the world, in Japan, the Institute of Occupational Health is named to Ramazzini and in other parts of the world because really he founded the science, the, the, the field of occupational health and environmental health. So we have the privilege being in Italy, you know, we have just castle all over and my, my laboratory is located in a castle. The castle is just 15 kilometers from Bologna and very, very easy to be reached. So this is an occasion to invite all of you to visit our, our facility. Um, the fresco are Renaissance one, is a lot of history there, but we have also very, very competitive lab of the next generation laboratories and we are working in the field of primary prevention that is to identify risk and to remove them as I am trying to do nowadays here um, through a lot of laboratories that involve more than 10 square, 10,000 square meter of, uh, of uh, laboratories. Our experience started with a famous chemical named vinyl chloride who was the precursor of all the plastic industry in the 70s and 80s. Is a chemical that is nowadays with us but at that time it was a thousand of parts for million in the workplace and there were a lot of workers that became sick for this chemical. We were able to predict what kind of tumor could happen in the workers through experimental animal studies. And we became famous at that time in the 70s and 80s, above all in the United States, because of this discovery, followed then by benzene, studies, formaldehyde, trichloroethylene, and other compound, mega compound of the industry that were assessed for the risk based on our animal studies. So perhaps you do not know that IARC 
the World Health Organization arm for cancer, is classifying chemicals or physical agents for their carcinogenicity based on epidemiological and experimental studies. Both of them are important to lead science and policy makers to the decision that a compound is carcinogenic. This is very important also to understand why experimental studies were performed on radiofrequency. So we are a very strange institution because we were part of the Italian national system for health. So we, I was an, a, a governative employer up to 2003. In 2003, due for different reasons, we were put out of the national health system. So being our region a very solidaristic one, uh, we organized our institution as a cooperative that nowadays has more than 30,000 citizens from all over the, the world, not only Italian, but also in the US and Europe, that buy with 25 euro a part of our um, institution, the company, and they manage both the choice for research, what is important for us citizens to know, and the fundraising to fund this research. So the research that I am presenting to you is completely independent, paid with the money of some public institution, some foundation, bank foundation, and from the citizen of the Bologna province. So, how can we manage such a strong uh, uh, work in terms of the, uh, the, the approach and what are the consequences of our, of our studies through a very much um, consolidated and re with a great reputation uh, scientists that are part of our scientific committee. It's Phil Landrigan, the first author of the Lancet Commission report on the situation of environment in the world. And Linda Birnbaum, who is the um, leader of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences in the US, and all the other, but I have not the time here to speak about all of them. But you understand that these people are the one that decide the, the design of our studies, they uh, analyze the results and decide if they are to be published or not. So it's not our small cooperative that is facing uh, the society, industry, and others, but a very, very strong scientific committee. What are the peculiarities of our studies? So we are using the same kind of rats. You know, all of you know rats. They are not so much loved in, uh, in our uh, now everyday life, but they are very useful to science because the most part of pathologies that we can observe in human could be can be reproduced in this kind of uh, animals. They have a geno genomic, epigenetic, and genetic uh, base that is very similar to the human counterpart. In particular, our colony that is selected in 40 years of activity reproduce completely the human counterpart. And I had the occasion to compare the data in a human population that was autopsied because we perform necropsy in our animals when they die. So all the tumors and pathologies that we observe are not the one that you observe during the life, but the one that every individual is bearing when it is dying. So comparing a human population in Trieste where in the hospital of Trieste, all people that died there 
underwent to an autopsy to the uh, population of rats of our colony, we found that the incidence of uh, tumors at death in our colony was very similar or is comparable, uh, equivalent to the cause of death that we, f or not cause of death by incidence of cancer in these rats. And uh, look to the arrow because uh, later on I have to tell you something about this arrow. This is the age in which the international guideline oblige uh, um, the scientists to kill the animals and to observe that there was an increase or not of tumors. 80% of tumors, both in experimental animals and human, arise after, in human, 60, 65 years of age, equivalent to 104 weeks in rats. So, when we will speak about the American study and our study, you have to know that they killed animals when they were still very young. We observed them until spontaneous death. So we had the proof that this method we adopt to observe until at least an age corresponding to 70, 75 years, allowed us in the past to discover the carcinogenicity of xylin, for example. They killed the animals before, and so they didn't find the result as a carcinogenic agent. But, uh, and this is, for example, another prerequisite. We start the study during the pregnancy of the mother, because if you are exposed, for example, to an antenna, and you are pregnant, your baby is already exposed. Look to what happened with vinyl chloride. No tumor of the liver in the mother, observed until spontaneous death, 40%, 40% in their offspring. So in the 70s, we already knew that exposure in the early phase of the life are more dangerous than in the adulthood. What we studied at the Ramazzini Institute, we studied the radio frequency um, uh, emitted by the antenna. And uh, we had uh, two uh, experiments. One we, where the radio frequency were studied alone at uh, um, intensity comparable to the one that are admitted uh, in our environment, in the workplace or at, at home. In Italy, it is at home, admitted six volt meter. We studied five, 25, and 50 volt meter. Then we also would like to see if uh, radio frequency could enhance the effect of uh, other physical agents that are well known as carcinogenic. And the case was that of uh, gamma radiation at low doses, at a dose comparable to the one um, that uh, everybody absorb with the computerized tomography. So very low doses, a human equivalent situation. As you can see, this is uh, the exposure system being us uh, uh, in the idea to reproduce the human counterpart. We created a condominium, let me say, with a woody rank and all the small flat, the cages with the inhabitants that were rats, starting from the mother pregnancy up to their spontaneous death. All the, the antenna was in the middle, so it was an environmental exposure, very similar to the one of humans. 
and all the walls around were shelled in order to have no redundance, redundancy of the, of the uh, waves. Every um, exposure that happened 19 hours a day, just five hours in the morning, stopping it uh, to, to allow people to clean animals, to give them eating and drinking. And uh, it was registered all the time, the exposure, in order that we have for the two year, three years of exposure, all the raw data available. What is the difference from our study and the National Toxicology Program One? The first studied a, a field that we call in our words, um, near field, because is also eating in some way the body. And so there are both uh, uh, eating effect and uh, not eating effect. So they are combined because it is like a device of a mobile phone. So the near field. We studied the far field, the environmental situation. Uh, as you know, the two laboratories are about 10,000 kilometer distance. We need half a day to reach each other. So communication nowadays are very, very simple. But I can assure you that a part of the beginning of the study, and then at the end when we had available pathology, we didn't know what was happening there, and they didn't know what was happening in our lab. The range of SAR, that is the adsorbed uh, energy, as you can see in our studies, thousand of time lower than the one studied in the United States. So the range was enormous or the range of the energy absorbed by the body in the two different uh, studies. But uh, uh, also it is important to say that both studies were independent. The one, the one of the US, was asked by the Food and Drug Administration and received a lot of funds. And uh, they studied both uh, rats and mice. We started the same year, 2005, because citizens of our province asked to be more aware about what is the problem related to radio frequency. So we are still in a very good relationship with the mayor of the different little town and so on. And every time that there was an antenna to be placed, also if the law is not requesting that. The mayor of the town asked us to come and to give some explanation. So this is uh, the plan of the study. And uh, as you can see, the real difference is in the fact that they truncated the study when the animals when, were 104 weeks of age. That means 60 years compared to humans, we controlled them up to the uh, spontaneous death. So what we found, so it was astonishing me because I have to tell you the pure truth. We were in our lab and I was uh, peer reviewing, that is my work, I am chief of pathology. I, w I was peer reviewing the slides that my younger pathologists were uh, bringing to me, and I started to see one, two, three of this uncommon tumor of the heart. Really very, very rare in our, in our uh, strain. And this uh, tumor of the heart are not of the muscle of the heart, but they are of the nervous cell that cover the internal part of the heart and transmit the signal to have the contraction. Like in the nerves, we have the same cells that cover the nerves all over in our body. 
But we have the phone close to our face. In our experiment, it was a whole body uh, exposure. So perhaps uh, the most active uh, Schwann cells were those of the heart. So this is just my opinion as nothing of scientific, but just an empirical idea of what happened. And uh, the art had also hyperplasia of this cell. We both observed the same uh, results in the US and in my institute. It happened that in 2016, the National Toxicology Program made a press conference announcing that they have seen this strange tumor. I called on my staff and I told, my dear, we have trouble. There is a problem, a very strong problem, because I have seen that our rats in the first group, the either those group, that, because we start from control group and then we continue with the other doses from the bigger to, to the lower. I have seen three of these tumor in two weeks in 120 animals. So it seems to me that it is too much to be regular. And uh, we asked uh, to uh, the National Toxicology Program to fi we finish all the review of all heart and all brain. So our study is not completed up to now. It is regarding only brain and heart that were the same tumors that they have observed, but it is the nervous system. So I asked her, please help me. I can't have the responsibility to bring at the attention of the world these results alone as Ramazzini Institute. We are 30 at the National uh, Institute of Environmental Health Science are 4,000. So you understand that is a big difference. And uh, I went in the US with my luggage with all these slides. We had a second opinion review of all slides and 11 pathologists the same that analyzed the slide of the National Toxicology Program confirmed. And also some of the lesions were over evaluated that were hyperplasia to me and they said, no, it is a tumor. So the results were published and the publication is now available. This is the kind of tumor, as you see, is a very strange one. This is the heart of a rat, an American rat. So this is the pattern that they observed. This is an Italian rat, and we also performed a specific staining that make colors only for this kind of cell, that is the S100, and all our cases were positive for this, uh, for this uh, staining. Just an empirical observation that I did on Friday, because Friday I had a suspect, I told to myself, we killed our animals when they were uh, one an, uh, at the end of the life. We didn't kill our animal, but we observed until the end of the life. The NTP killed the animal, but what should be, would be happen if they also observed the animal until spontaneous death, due to the fact that this is a tumor of the late period of the life, and I associated all the schwannomas I observed for all group, groups, all male and females, in my study. And I have seen that the most of them were observed in the last part of the life. So I suspect that if the US, with the doses and intensity of the cell that was higher than mine, should continue uh, to observe animals until spontaneous death, would have stronger results. So this is a very important issue, a very important issue. This is the publication. This is the 
the page of the meeting that in March last uh, this year we have had to uh, in May in May reconsider all the data of the National Toxicology Program. They were declared with the clear evidence of carcinogenicity. But I would like to move to the synergistic effect. We have not the money to conclude now this study, but it's very important because, as you can see from this table, there was a decrease both in the fertility index, consider that we exposed from pregnancy the dams, and the shot with the gamma radiation was only in the younger age when they were pregnant. But at the beginning, all the, fem uh, all the females of the two treated group were treated only by radiofrequency. And there was a decrease in the fertility, but also in the pregnancy index. So we have a lot of of suggestion now that fertility of humans is decreasing both in female and in, female, in male. And this is a consideration we should have. And also the weight of the puppies was lower in the treated animals. And you uh, probably have seen that also in the United States, they observed a decrease in the weight of the puppies. So another observation of our study that up to now we have not this topology was an increase of the lump nodules, mammary nodules, that we palpated during the weight of animal during the control. So we don't know up to now if it was a benign or a malignant tumor. Anyway, the, the, we noted an increase in mammary cancer. So what is the, 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 final, the final consideration? Um, this is the state of the art, but I would like to go because I think that I was long. I was long. I have time. It's OK. So who paid for all that? I told before, the most part was independent from foundation, from liberal donation, and so on. But what is interesting is that just one week or two ago, ICNIRP, which is the agency for the regulation on uh, uh, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, told that both the study, the National Toxicology Program 1, and our study are not, uh, not uh, consistent. They don't give any any clear uh, information about a carcinogenicity effect. So we are not pretending that we have strong data. But we have, uh, we revealed a, a, an hazard. There is an hazard. So in front of an hazard, what is doing industry? Usually, if you have a mixer in your cookie room, the, the mixer is functioning only if it is covered in order to protect your ends, to put it and, and cut them. So I think that industry has to protect us. And also, I am not a physics. My study are of biology, I think, to be only a poor biologist, but I know very well my work. And I can tell you that these tumors are very rare and they are indicators of an hazard. So this is what I think. But what I can answer to ICNIR, ICNIR says both the study are very well done, superb. So both the NTP and the Ramassini one. So nothing to do about methodology. They are well done. But they say schwannomas of the art are not common in humans. Um, if you, you are not doctors, but you understand very well that someone die for a, a heart attack on any, the, he is not 
undergoing to a necropsy, an autopsy. So no one knows really what was the cause of death. No one knows how many people die for this kind of rare tumor, as it was with the liver angiosarcoma 40, 50 years ago, because it was very rare, and this is very rare. So we have not a comparison with the Umar. I can't say that I know how many people are affected by that. Uh, this lesion could not be interpreted as due by chance, as Ignirp says. They could be observed by chance. 10 kilometer distance, different colony of animals in two different country. The only thing that they have in common that the study are independent and this is very important, we had the same result. I, I, I say not by chance. And again, they accuse us to, to give results that could affect the stability of society, you know. We, we are so happy to have all these devices and now we, we are making fair about people. No, I don't want to make fair. I want to push industry to be at the service of society because usually we consumers are at the service of society. So I would like to change this paradigm. And I have not the responsibility of the change. It is uh, the, the, the society of the mm, policy makers, uh, is the, the people that are elected by our vote that could uh, provide us some security. And uh, again, you remember, as I told at the beginning, that IR classified as possible carcinogen on the basis of uh, limited evidence in epidemiological studies and not sufficient evidence in animals. Now we have data that are sufficient. So I really ask to all administrators to write to IARC to reevaluate this radiofrequency because the only way we have to change is to be all together and to push who has to decide what happened. So the precautionary principle is something that we have so clear in Europe, but we never apply. We speak about it, but we never apply. I think that this is the precise case in which we have to apply precautionary principle, and we have not to make the errors of the past. Just as some example, my institute studied more than 200 compound. In the list that I am presented, you see that some compound was studied in 1979, benzene. We published the data about its carcinogenicity, but to have the IARC monograph that declared that benzene was a clear evidence carcinogen passed 33 years. And this happened in a lot of cases. Look at this table. This, when I did that, I had, I don't know what is the name, the skin that was like, uh, you know, the, like a, a chicken. <laughs> because it was to me, oh, I worked at 40 years and very few changed. So it's very, very frustrating. Again, you see the diesel exhaust and a lot of compounds that now we know, but we employed more than decades to apply a rules to these compounds. We have in Italy a very strong campaign of, uh, of prevention. A mobile phone, take it off your hand, head. In order, we go in the school, we have a, a lot of educational activity with the positive and bad things that we tell to, to, the, to the young people. But what we have to face now is the problem of the 5G 
technologies. I am in favor of technology. I am a scientist, I work with this kind of technology. But I consider it that there will not be for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, a, a little piece of the earth without any radio frequency. No insect, no animal, not any uh, living being could be uh, avoid, could avoid to be affected. So this is a very, very serious pr pr problem. And uh, let me dedicate this presentation to my mentor, Professor Cesare Maltoni, who was the founder of experimental oncology in the 70s and 80s. And uh, he learned me not to have any fear to say the truth. So I thank you today very much to give me the opportunity to perform this presentation and tell you some truth. Thank you very much. <laughs>